British actor Tim Curry is a man of many talents, best known for his role as Dr. Frankenfurter in both the original musical stage production and feature film version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Tim has been breaking down barriers from the very beginning of his career while turning himself into an industry trailblazer. Unfortunately, back in 2012, Tim suffered a life-threatening stroke that left him with slurred speech and paralyzed on one side of his face. Nonetheless, Tim has remained optimistic ever since and has dedicated himself towards recovering best he can. Today, he's once again strong enough to share the difficulties he has faced with others. Thankfully for Tim, he's owned a series of stunning residences based out of Los Angeles over the years, which is where he's spent the vast majority of the last decade recuperating. The first home on record that Curry owned in the city of Los Angeles was a gated retro farmhouse in the foothills of the celebrity-endorsed subdivision of the Oaks. Next to the Griffith Park Observatory, this home was constructed in 1957 with an exterior full of vintage charm, including diamond-shaped leaded glass windows, as well as a gated driveway and a curved stone pathway leading to the front door. The interior was then updated with chic, clean, and contemporary sense of style. Inside this 1,891 square foot home, you'll find conventional ceilings and black crown molding. There's also quirky wallpaper eclectic furnishings, and a low-hanging chandelier to be found in a living room that also boasts a fireplace. Not far from there is a den with a fireplace of its own, not to mention a wall-mounted TV and a skylight above. When it comes to mealtime, Tim used his well-equipped chef's kitchen with high-end appliances, ceramic floors, and a breakfast nook. Upstairs, each of the two bedrooms boasts its own ensuite, including the master suite, which has the added bonus of a sitting area too. But as nice as the inside, is the loveliest part of this home is stepping through the French doors to discover the extra large patio and lagoon style pool with accompanying spa. There are even stone steps that lead down to a garden making this Tim's own personal private oasis for a number of years. Then in 2005 Tim listed this property and sold it to actress Christina Ricci for 1.5 million dollars. She would live here for the next decade before selling the home at a slight loss in 2014. As for Tim after selling that home, he immediately bought a new one, not far from his first, in the neighborhood of Los Feliz. Having sold one home to film actress Christina Ricci, Tim Curry turned around and bought his next home from TV star and friend David Hyde Pierce. Tim purchased a four bedroom, four bathroom, 3,365 square foot home from the man best known as Niles Crane in 2006 for a reported $2 million. Under Curry's ownership, this 1920s era abode underwent a huge renovation, updating its interior, including the study, den, and breakfast room, while keeping much of the period details and charm for this private home that sits on a gorgeously maintained one third of an acre lot with palm trees and a swimming pool. After suffering his stroke in 2012, this was also the first house that Tim returned to in order to begin the long process of healing. Two years later, however, Tim would sell this property in 2014 for $3.2 million. I guess he must have already been feeling a bit better by that point. But there's one other home Tim owned in Los Feliz that he sold just prior to his health scare. And something tells me that if he had the chance to go back in time and do it all over again, he might make a different decision because this place is exactly the kind of home you'd want to recuperate in. Back in November 2004, Tim Curry bought himself a property with a pretty remarkable pedigree. The home, constructed in 1922 by Los Angeles architect Stiles O. Clements, sits on a 2.2 acre lot and was one of the first homes to ever be built in the neighborhood of Los Feliz. When Tim first discovered this property, he wasn't looking to buy a new home for himself, but a friend of his knew his immense love for gardening, and he believed that this could be the perfect spot for Tim to develop that passion even further. At that time, this home was painted a not so tasteful shape of red and was in desperate need of fixing up. Nonetheless, with all that potential for a gorgeous garden space, Curry put in an offer of over $3.3 million anyway. Soon enough, it was his. Tim rolled up his sleeves and got to work to bring the outside of this place to life. When discussing his passion for gardening, Curry once told The Guardian, the idea is organizing nature not just into pleasing shapes, but also as a kind of spiritual resource. Unfortunately, taming the garden was easier said than done 
death, both because of its enormous size and the fact it had remained untended for so long. When Tim arrived, the space was full of weeds, skunk nests, and the occasional coyote that would stroll by and look at him as if he was the intruder. With the help of a professional landscaper, Curry removed 40 tons of weeds and unearthed a series of stone paths beneath the dirt. Those pathways were then restored and added to divide the grounds into higher and lower sections. This enhanced the dramatic effect of Tim's garden with its special combo of plants and textures. For instance, the lower section boasted an English garden with silver and lavender mound Artemisia, as well as 150 rose bushes. Elsewhere, Tim crafted a Mediterranean area with potato vines dangling from an old avocado tree. Meanwhile, up in the higher section, he planted cacti and succulents, backed by a black volcanic rock. Above that is a tropical poolside area with pines and camellia bushes. But Curry's favorite spots of all were probably the two patios on either side of the house, each of which came with a bench from which he could watch the sunrise from one and sunset from the other. Situated just below Griffith Park, Tim's longtime home was formerly owned by the likes of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and cinematographer Robert Richardson before Tim moved in. Known locally as the Sailor House, this Spanish-style estate boasts a checkerboard floor that greet guests immediately upon entering. The ceilings are equally nice, thanks to the delicately carved wooden beams that effortlessly draw the eyes upwards. The downstairs great rooms are all awe-inspiring in their own right, boasting well-preserved original details and hand-painted ceilings. There's even a dining room that's perfect for throwing large dinner parties and catered celebrations, while the kitchen has been updated with green custom cabinets, a large center island with a sink, stainless steel appliances, a TV, and doors leading to the outside patio. As for the master bedroom, it boasts large floor-to-ceiling French doors on either side, as well as a Juliet balcony and a secondary larger balcony on the opposite side that overlooks the lush hills. Not far from that bedroom is a second suite that boasts a coffered ceiling plus a more modern ensuite bath. Tim's old home also included a glamorous media room, a game space with a card table, a library, and a guest house. All that being said, for my money, the best spa is the one-of-a-kind Whitestone Amphitheater that you'll find sitting on top of the entire property. Couple that with the ground's endless series of waterfalls, fountains, and koi ponds, and I can't understand why Tim ever wanted to leave. According to records, Tim sold this property in 20 2011, just one year before he got sick, to actor Robert Pattinson for $6.2 million. Over the next few years, the property would continue to change hands from one famous owner to the next, including Noah Weil and Jim Parsons. But Tim never returned to the home he helped breathe new life into. Where exactly Tim lives these days isn't entirely clear. There's no official record anywhere to be found, but the rumor mill suggests he still owns a home in LA, just with a much smaller garden that still provides the necessary sanctuary he needs to rest, recuperate, and work on his tan. But wherever he's living, it seems Tim's home has revisited that bright shade of red based upon remote interviews he's given over recent months. Until we find out exactly where that might be, we'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for joining me today, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Would you ever buy a multi-million dollar fixer-upper simply because you believed in the potential of its garden? Let me know if you have planting on the mind as much as Tim Curry does in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a drop. My name's Kara. If you want to check out some more celebrity homes, then stick around because next, I'm about to take you inside the properties of Mr. Twilight himself, Robert Pattinson. I'll see you next time. Bye! Robert Pattinson, the once hesitant movie star, is making a big comeback as you probably already know. He's going to be the next Batman. I'm vengeance. Despite his Hollywood success, he's tried to stay low-key, which could explain why his current home is pretty modest. Although back around the Kristen Stewart days, the actor resided in an iconic Los Feliz mansion and a stunning property in Bel Air, some may say his current Hollywood house is a downgrade. But Robert likes his villa-style residence just fine. We'll take a look at some of the properties Robert's called home. We even found the listings. Robert Pattinson is an English actor who began his journey acting in a London theatre club at the young age of 15. Fellow Harry Potter fans will no doubt remember his big break in the film when he was cast as Cedric in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now I'm probably the only chick ever that wasn't a Twilight fan. 
I know, shame on me. But my opinion is irrelevant because the book and movie series was like the most famous thing back then. It was inescapable. And as you know, Robert starred as the lead in the Twilight films as none other than Edward Cullen. The five movie installations came out during 2008 to 2012 and earned a combined massive total of $3.3 billion worldwide. Not to mention, it brought Robert worldwide fame and established him among the highest paid actors in the world. Thanks to playing Edward Cullen and also for having a whirlwind and dramatic relationship with his co-star Kristen Stewart, Robert was definitely the center of a ton of media attention, whether he wanted to be in the public eye or not. Despite starring in romantic dramas and being offered big budget film roles, Robert has often preferred starring in more independent productions. This is one reason his role in Batman is also a big deal. It seems like the man likes staying out of the immediate Hollywood circle and likes his privacy. When you guys see his house, you might agree that Robert is on the more modest side. Either way, Robert's current estimated net worth is at at least 100 million, so if he really wanted to, he could afford way more than his home that's worth only a couple million. Hey guys and girls, it's Kara, and in honor of Robert Pattinson being the new Batman, today we're gonna be covering his house tour here for you on Famous Entertainment. We'll look at his current villa in Hollywood He's lived since 2014, but also a couple of his previous properties, which are more extravagant, just so you can compare. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours in the likes of Miley Cyrus and Julia Roberts, and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and as usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. In 2011, when Robert and Kristen Stewart were still a thing, the ultimate gift for any Twilight fan came on the market. The ex-couple's former Bel Air home. Located in a private neighborhood on an even more private plateau, there was the house, overlooking Stone Canyon Reservoir. It's one of only two west-facing properties that overlook this body of water, and let me tell you, it makes for some gorgeous views. This house sits on half an acre of land and is completely secure and gated. There's a main house spanning 2,604 square feet and a separate guest house spanning 1,440 square feet. The retreat was built in the 90s but had recent renovations and updates for modern times. From the entryway, steps lead up to a spacious living and dining area with high wood ceilings and hardwood floors. The main level also has a contemporary kitchen, media room, and a powder room. Directly outside the great room, there's a large terrace for entertaining and barbecuing, a pool and spa, and a gazebo to sunset watch from. On the lower level, you'll find the master suite where I'm sure once upon a time a Rob and Kristen shared. There were views over the reservoir and French doors out to the lawn. Nearby, there were two guest bedrooms, a bathroom, and a laundry room. This separate guest house has an open living area with full kitchen and office. A spiral staircase leads to a loft bedroom upstairs. The grounds were surrounded by greenery and amazing views over the water and canyons, and it was only minutes to Beverly Hills. It was last listed for about six million, and I'm sure Robert enjoyed his time living here. Before Rob moved to the spot he's at now, his previous home was actually a famous Hollywood pad, also dubbed a celeb pedigreed home, considering its list of past residents. In 2014, it was reported that Rob sold the home to none other than Big Bang star Jim Parsons for over 6.3 million. Rob resided here for a few years, purchasing the home for 6.2 million, and then quietly floated off the property a while before selling the place to Mr. Parsons. The home is located in Los Feliz and was actually one of the first homes built in the rolling hills of this neighborhood, meaning it's been around almost 100 years. It occupies a 1.43 acre, fully gated estate below the beautiful Griffith Park, and the home is also known in some circles as the Sailor House. Mr. Pattinson and Parsons are only some of the more recent in a long string of high profile owners of the home, and others include the likes of Oscar winning cinematographer Noah Wiley, director Robert Lukatic, and actor Tim Curry, who's apparently the one responsible for putting together the jaw dropping gardens here. This sailor house is a Spanish style estate by architect Styles O. Clements, who also designed the El Capitan Theatre in Hollywood, and inside it spans 4,026 square feet with three beds and 3.5 baths. A checkerboard floor greets visitors at the entryway and staircase to the upper level. The grandly scaled property features preserved details in the architecture with modern updates throughout. The downstairs common spaces have high, hand-painted ceilings with preserved original beams. 
The wraparound eating kitchen has been updated and offers custom green cabinets, a large center island, a TV, and stainless steel appliances. All rooms here are bright and open onto the rear patio or outdoor living room, and the kitchen opens to its own dining terrace. There's also a glamorous den or media room, a card room, and guest room with new private bath on the main level. Upstairs is the master suite with French doors on either side, an ensuite bath and super spacious walk-in closet dressing room, as well as a balcony overlooking the terrace and hills. A second suite also occupies the upper floor with a renovated bathroom. On the grounds, this villa has some of the most impressive gardens I've ever seen at the home. And like I mentioned, reportedly Tim Curry is the resident who put in the work to create this unique landscaping. The high maintenance gardens climb onto the hillside behind the house and elsewhere there's a lagoon style swimming pool and an amphitheater. Also amongst the gardens is a fountain and a koi pond. So although Robert's home is more low key than the sailor house and doesn't have gardens as impressive, it does follow a similar vibe. His current residence is also a Spanish style villa with lush landscaping. It looks like the actor has a specific taste when it comes to his homes. In 2014, Rob bought this place in the Hollywood Hills. It's in a secluded celeb filled pocket of Hollywood, set privately behind another house down a long, charming red brick driveway. We could say this home signified the end of two important eras for Rob, Twilight and Kristen Stewart. He indeed wanted a change and decided to move from the home he once shared with her, buying this private house in the hills. Certainly more low key. This single level Hacienda style home is all about simplicity and natural beauty and he paid about 2.17 million for it. Inside it spans a humble 1,940 square feet with two beds and two baths, just cozy enough for the actor. This single level home was built in 1958 and of course updated since, offering rustic terracotta tile floors throughout the main living spaces and switching to wood floors in the bedrooms. The interconnected main areas of Rob's home include a reasonably roomy living room with French doors to the yard and a double sided fireplace leading to the kitchen and dining area. The combo kitchen and dining room offers skylights and high vaulted ceilings as well as high-end stainless steel appliances. Not to mention a cast iron range worth a whopping 14K. Both bedrooms here have custom built-in wardrobes and direct access to outdoor living and lounging areas, and both bathrooms have arched combination shower tubs. Outside, Rob's property seems super serene and secluded. A brick patio wraps around the residence and leads to the private tree-shaded yard with flat lawn, swimming pool, and views of the canyon. There's a hammock on the patio for relaxation and elsewhere a separate and secluded spa with room for two. Courtyard areas around the side and back of the home and there are more hedges and trees around for privacy. Although the home may seem humble for an actor worth over 100 million, it seems like Rob loves the place just fine as he's been living there for some years now. All right, so that's all I got for Robert Pattinson, AKA the new Batman and his properties. We took a look at his previous Bel Air home, the famous sailor house he used to occupy in Los Feliz and his current Hollywood spots. After seeing his homes, what did you guys think? Did you have a favorite? I think mine was the Los Feliz house. I mean, those gardens were something else. I'd love to show them off and take a dip in that amazing pool. As usual, let me know in the comments as well as what other celebrity house tours you want to see next on this channel. I also just launched the personal channel and I'm doing some at home videos so if you guys want to get to know me better be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be replying to all my comments over there and we'll link you my first vlog. Thanks for tuning in, follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!